Hello and welcome to the American Planning Association's National Capital Area Chapter 2021 Annual Conference. Uh, thanks so much for joining us uh, today. Uh, this session is entitled Montgomery County's Pedestrian Survey, Understanding Pedestrian Behavior and Preferences. Uh, we have a tremendous speaker in Jesse Cohn McGowan from um, NNCPPC, Montgomery County Planning. Um, and if you are looking to claim uh, CM credits from this, uh, this is worth 0.25 credits. Um, and with that, I'm gonna pass it over to our speaker. Um, Jesse, take it away. Great, thanks, Nick. Um, so again, my name is Jesse Cohn McGowan. I'm a transportation planner at the Montgomery County Planning Department, which is part of MNCPPC, the Maryland National Capital Parks and Planning Commission. Um, today, I'll be presenting about a countywide pedestrian survey that we completed. This work was actually led by my colleague, Eli Glacier, who is leading the pedestrian master plan, but he's currently out on um, paternity leave. So I am covering in his absence. So to just provide a quick overview of the pedestrian survey, this was the first statistically valid countywide survey that Montgomery County has undertaken to understand how and why people walk and roll in Montgomery County. So there were a few reasons why we undertook this survey as part of the pedestrian master plan. The first was to understand existing conditions, um, perceptions and attitudes of walking and rolling in the county, to use the results of this survey to inform the recommendations of the pedestrian master plan, and then also to use this as a benchmarking tool. So if we do this survey again in the future, how do we see that conditions, perceptions and attitudes have changed as we've made changes to the pedestrian environment? So the survey was distributed to, it was mailed by a postcard to 60,000 households throughout Montgomery County. And it was distributed evenly across three different geographies that we've identified as urban, transit corridors, or rural or exurban. And so you can see on the map on the right, the areas that are red represent urban areas, blue are transit corridors, and then the yellow are rural or exurban. And if you're familiar with Montgomery County, you may know that we have some um, incorporated jurisdictions of Rockville and Gaithersburg. As the county planning department, we did not include um, households in those jurisdictions as part of this survey. The survey was available in English, Spanish, as well as simplified Chinese. So upon sending out these 60,000 postcards, um, we received a relatively good response rate of 4.1%. Um, that may seem kind of low, but it did provide us with um, a less than 5% margin of error for each area type. So that means that um, we're, we're relatively confident in the results that we found for, for both the urban um, transit corridor and rural and exurban area types. What we then did is that we weighted the results based on the 2018 American Community Survey, um, looking at income, race, ethnicity, and population in order to ensure that the findings that we have from these results um, are, are representative of the population. And so if we saw that a certain demographic was overrepresented in the survey results, we, we did some weighting in order to have a more representative um, finding. So I'll walk through some of the findings of the survey. Um, the first, we looked at walk purpose. And so you can see in this chart on the right, um, how, how many people during the previous month um, walked for one of these different, one or more of these different purposes. Um, you can see that far and away, exercise and recreation is the most common. Um, this is a good reminder that while as transportation planners, we're often thinking about utilitarian walking trips, you know, walking to school, walking to, walking to work, to the grocery store, et cetera. But really people said that far and away, um, most of the walking that they do is for exercise or outdoor recreation. We also broke this data out, as you can see on the chart on the right, um, by the different area types that we looked at, the urban, transit corridor, and rural and exurban areas. And so you can see that the blue bar for urban is generally longer for each of the different um, utilitarian types, like food shopping, personal business, med medical appointments, et cetera. We also found that the commute to work, I'm not sure if you can see my cursor, um, but here about in the middle, commute to work, is um, much higher than what we've seen when we've looked at the American Community Survey, which is a national survey um, as part of the census. And the reason why this may be higher is because the American Community Survey says, what's the primary way that you get to work? Um, what's the way that you get to work most days? Given the way that we conducted this pedestrian survey, people could say whether or not they commuted to work by walking, maybe just one day a week, maybe even just one day in the past month, um, but we could better understand and get a more complete picture of the extent to which people commute to work. 
We also asked people whether or not they had um, a physical or mental disability. And so we also disaggregated some of our results based on disability. And we found that people with reported disabilities were more likely to walk and roll as part of a grocery trip, um, medical appointment, or when dining out than those without a disability. And, and one reason for this could be if you have a disability that prevents you from operating a motor vehicle independently, you may be more reliant um, on traveling, walking, or rolling. We also asked as part of this survey about walking duration. How long are the walking trips that you take? Um, again, to kind of first focus on those more recreational trips on that top bar, we see that exercise trips tend to take longer than other pedestrian trip types. Here we see that about 60% are um, go up to 40 minutes, whereas for the rest of those, you see that the blue and red bars for trip 5 to 10 minutes or 10 to 20 minutes are really more of the majority of pedestrian travel. Um, it's not shown on the screen here, but I also did want to note that pedestrian trips in urban areas tended to be shorter than those in other areas. And this may be because there's a greater density of land uses. And so the grocery store, the nearest grocery store may be a closer walk than if you lived in a transit corridor um, or in a rural or ex-urban area. We also asked questions to understand respondents' um, understanding of, of traffic laws. And so we asked a variety of true-false questions of, of, is it true that a driver is required to do X or that a pedestrian is required to do X? And what we found from these questions is that knowledge of driver regulations was actually pretty high. Um, responses related to distracted driving, driver yielding, et cetera, were greater than 90%. However, there was a very dramatic difference between the knowledge of driver regulations and pedestrian regulations. And so we saw that the knowledge of pedestrian regulations was quite a bit lower, specifically about where pedestrians are permitted to cross the street. We saw that about half of the respondents thought that pedestrians were only permitted to cross at marked crosswalks, whereas um, in reality, you're permitted to cross at locations that do not have a marked crosswalk. Some respondents said that they did not walk at all during the previous month, and we asked, you know, why, why is it that you're not making any walking trips? And so we saw a variety of responses. Um, this survey was completed about a year ago. Um, and so we saw that COVID-19 restrictions and concerns was really a top reason why people reported not walking. Um, I've mentioned land use a few times through this presentation, and we saw that some folks said that they don't walk because there's nothing nearby to walk to. There's no really destination. Um, and then we also saw some responses about the pedestrian environment. Um, so poor pedestrian pathways or um, traffic safety concerns, et cetera. We also found that some people don't like walking or have some personal safety concerns um, about walking in their neighborhood. And that's a good transition, that mention of personal safety, because in addition to asking about traffic safety, we also asked a variety of questions that looked more broadly about um, your experience and the respondents' experience walking in their communities. And so through this, we found that Hispanic respondents were slightly less likely to agree that they felt safe walking and rolling in public spaces. We found that Black and African American respondents were less likely to agree that they felt more comfortable seeing police in public spaces. And we also found that respondents in urban areas were more likely to have seen or experienced harassment or violence while walking. And so as I mentioned, um, this survey was done in a variety of different areas throughout the county and that we did also um, weight the survey based on race and income and other characteristics. And so this is a way that we can get a better understanding of how th there's not one monolithic experience of walking in Montgomery County and that we need to be, um, we need to understand the differences, whether that's based on race or location, um, gender, et cetera, um, how that, how those attributes impact your experience in the walking environment. And the solutions we have may be different based on the location, et cetera. A major part of the pedestrian survey was also looking at pedestrian satisfaction. And so as part of this, we asked, how satisfied are you with the pedestrian experience? And what is most important to improve? And so what we found through this, um, you can see in this chart on the right, was that respondents in urban areas were more satisfied with the pedestrian experience than those in transit corridors or exurban and rural areas. So we see that countywide, the average um, of satisfaction is about 52%. But that's higher, as I mentioned, in urban areas and lower in other parts of the county. And as I mentioned before, we did disaggregate some of the results based on disability, and we found that respondents with a reported disability were less satisfied with the pedestrian environment than 
those without a disability. So the difference here is pretty dramatic, a 53% for um, those without a disability relative to 43% for those with a disability. So a 10% difference between those groups. And so how did we measure pedestrian satisfaction? Um, what we did is we asked about a variety of different aspects of the pedestrian environment and respondents could, um, could indicate whether or not they were dissatisfied, um, very dissatisfied, you know, neutral, satisfied, or very satisfied with different elements. And so we found that the top five satisfaction topics were personal safety, distance to cross the street, um, time to cross at signals, the number of marked crosswalks and pedestrian signage, and on the other side of the coin, those that were had the lowest level of satisfaction across the respondents was lighting at crossings, um, the distance between the sidewalk and cars, so maybe a buffer space there, um, snow removal, as well as vehicles cutting across the sidewalk, and speed of moving cars. And so what we did with those results is that we mapped them um, onto this quad chart that you can see here. And so for each um, item, we had whether or not the respondents found it to be of high satisfaction or low satisfaction, as well as whether or not they saw it to be of low importance or high importance. And this was helpful for us to think about what should our priorities really be. So starting in the right top right corner, um, critical factors are those that are of really high importance and also high satisfaction. These are things that are important, but we're also currently doing a pretty good job at addressing them. In the bottom right corner, we have items that are high importance but low satisfaction. These are opportunities. These are really the things that we need to work on, um, given that they are important to residents of Montgomery County, but we're currently not um, serving residents' needs in these areas. In the bottom left, um, these are items that need to be monitored. They're issues that generally have low satisfaction, but have also been identified as low importance. And then on the top left, um, we have value improvement. So this is where people are pretty satisfied um, with these items, but they, they're they relatively not that important. There's incremental changes, small things that we could do to make the environment better, um, but generally we're doing a good job on these items. And so I'm gonna walk through some of the results that we found for the urban, the transit corridor, and the um, exurban rural. And I think we're gonna really just focus here on this presentation on the bottom right corner of opportunities. Again, these are the things that, where there is a high importance but low satisfaction. So things we really need to think about as we move forward to recommendations in the pedestrian master plan. So here first, we see that lighting is a major priority, both overhead lighting and lighting at crossings. Um, there's issues with driver yielding, so drivers stopping at me while I'm crossing the street. Um, there are some concerns raised about sidewalks and car distance. So that, again, this is the buffer between the sidewalk and the street. And, and finally, the number of vehicles crossing, cutting across crosswalks is an issue as well. So when we shift to transit corridors, we see that a lot of the same issues um, arise in this area as did in the urban areas. And so that's helpful for us to know that we can take a similar approach to our recommendations um, and, and how we prioritize different issues in transit corridors as well as the exurban and rural, or sorry, transit corridors as well as the urban environment. Now shifting lastly to look at the rural and exurban quad chart, I wanna just primarily call out that we see sidewalks as an issue of high importance here that we didn't see in the other, in the other um, quad charts and this is something that um, on the whole, residents of rural and exurban communities found to be lacking. They had low satisfaction here. In addition, we also see that walking access to retail restaurants and parks is identified as high importance and low satisfaction. So when we're looking at our recommendations for our rural and exurban areas of the county, these are things that we'll need to keep in mind that weren't identified as, as issues or as major issues um, as part of the other geographies that we looked at. And so as I start to come to a close, I do want to share some of the lessons learned. Um, if you plan to undertake a survey like this, you know, just want to share some of the things that we learned throughout this process. So first of all, it's important to consider how you think the results will be used when you're developing questions. Um, will you be using this to inform recommendations? Are you looking for something statistically valid? Um, you know, the way that you frame the questions and the questions that you choose to ask should be informed by what you're hoping to get out of this effort overall. It's not a survey for survey's sake, but a survey to inform future work in the county. Um, in addition, another lesson learned was that we found that this is our first survey. And so without a benchmark, it was hard for us to know 
how well are we doing? Um, we didn't know how well we were doing relative to the past. And also given that this was a survey unique to Montgomery County, we couldn't really compare ourselves to other peers in the region. Um, lastly, while we did ask some questions about walking frequency and mode share, we found that um, walking frequency is really a much more valuable variable than mode share because you know everyone's a pedestrian sometimes, whether they're walking or rolling, even if it's you know, you're unable to park close to your destination or you're walking the dog, things like that. Almost everyone has a reason that they're out walking or rolling in the community. So as I close, I just wanna provide a little bit more information about the pedestrian master plan that we're currently working on. I've included a link to the webpage for the pedestrian master plan at the bottom of the page. So in addition to developing this pedestrian survey, we've also conducted a pedestrian level of comfort analysis and so this evaluates all of the segments and all of the crossings throughout the county to see whether or not they are um, comfortable for pedestrians. And so we're using this to understand accessibility to, to schools and to other destinations and to understand where we really need to make infrastructure improvements. We've also developed a pedestrian audit toolkit, which allows um, both county staff as well as residents to go out and evaluate different corridors throughout Montgomery County to identify, you know, what are some of the pedestrian challenges with the current environment and what are some changes that could be made to improve comfort and safety. Um, we've also conducted a school travel tally. So talking with um, or having students throughout the county complete a survey of how they got to school. And this is helpful for us to understand, you know, where are their high rates of walking, but low levels of comfort or where there are high levels of comfort and low levels of walking, and what are the solutions that we need to think about in order to really improve both comfort, safety, and the level of walking throughout the county. Um, and lastly, as we are moving forward with this project, we're gonna be thinking about project prioritization, policies and practices, as well as design standards and programming. And so the expected completion of the pedestrian master plan is in spring 2023. And so that's everything I have for you today. And thanks so much for your time. I'm I'm happy to answer any questions via email. There, my email address is here at the bottom and, and hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.